Property tax assessments are being mailed out. If you haven't received yours yet, you're in for a shock. I haven't received my notification yet, but I went to the county website and found this document, which shows my assessment year over year. In 2021, the bottom line was $680,000, and in 2022, it's $1,022,123. This is after the $125,000 home exemption. You see the original figures up top before the deductions and all that stuff. Oh my God, you're in for a shock. Now, the news isn't as bad as you think it is. There's some bad parts. Let me try to take it apart for you. Uh, For the last 10 years or so, I've been keeping a worksheet. Here it is, where I take my taxable value of my home, and then I add up all the taxes that go to the various taxing districts, and then calculate my total taxes paid, and then the percentage of what the total taxes are as far as my overall tax bill is concerned, just because I love numbers and math and stuff like that, and it's it's fascinating. Plus, it also gives me a a brief opportunity to do a projection on what my property taxes could be for the next year. And this is the problem. Property taxes in Idaho are unpredictable, and they're unpredictable because the assessments are uncontrolled. I'll get back to that in just a second. Here's a chart of my property tax value, taxable value of my home since Uh, 2011, and you can see that it's spiked in the last three years or so. The total taxes I paid, though, if you look at this chart, it's kind of flat. Now, what's important to notice in this calculation is what's called the mill rate, which is the percentage of your property taxes as related to the value of your home, the assessed value. And here you get this chart, And you see the mill rate has gone down. As my assessment has risen, as the value of my home has gone up, the percentage that I pay in property taxes has dropped. Just going through the city of Coeur d'Alene, starting in 2011, the amount of taxes I paid to the city of Coeur d'Alene was just over $2,200. Then in uh, 2021, the amount that I paid, so 10 years later, was over $2,400. This represents an increase of 10.6%. This is roughly equal to the number of property tax increases over that period of time, and I've been on council almost the entire time. So they took a 3%, they took a 2%, they took a 2.5%, they took another 3%. Whatever they took, and and I voted against all of those, by the way, uh, the total ends up being this. 10.6%, which is exactly how my taxes have gone up. And this is irrelevant of my evaluation, which was $351,000 in 2011, then $680,000 last year, which was an increase of 93.3%. Now, the taxes that I pay to the city and overall did not go up 93%. They went up based on how that taxing district raised their budget rate increased their tax rate. Property taxes are unpredictable. I don't know what they're going to be next year. I assume they're going to be within a certain range, and I always assume that they're going to go up. Now, if I extrapolate on my worksheet, as I've done here, based on the percentage, the mill rate for each taxing district, I can see that my projected property tax would be $9,000. And that is just simply the 50.25% increase in the valuation for my home. But that's not what it's going to be. It won't be that big because property taxes in Idaho are calculated using this bizarre budget calculation. So a taxing district can take the value of last year's budget and they can increase it up to 3%. This is the the point of contention when they have their budget meetings. So a taxing district can take 0% increase, which the city of Coeur d'Alene has done several times over the past few years. Uh, NIC did it this year. Um, and then there's 3%. Now, as a, a politician, as an elected official, 0% is where I start. That is the floor. A lot of elected officials, including, I would think, a majority of the Coeur d'Alene City Council and other elected officials in the county, think that 3% is the floor. So they start at 3 and then they say, oh, we're only taking 2.5%. They, they've cut it half a percent. Bullshit. You start at 0 But they can go up to 3 and then they can add new growth. 
Now, these totals, this, this amount is totaled. So this is the amount, the budgeting authority that the agency has. And then this is divided by property values in the district. If everyone's property value goes up 50% like mine did, then my taxes would be relatively flat. But they don't. It's inconsistent. In fact, if you've just bought your house in Kootenai County, you probably didn't see much of an increase at all. It's us old timers who've been here a long time who are seeing the big jumps. I don't know what the average increase is in Kootenai County. If it's 50%, then my taxes are flat. If the average increase is 40%, 30%, 20%, then I'm going to be paying a hell of a lot more in property taxes. If it's over that amount, say the average value, I'll show you the formula again, the average value of all property in the district went up, say, 70% then my property taxes would go down because mine only went up 50%. This is very complicated. And it was made even more complicated by the idiots in the legislature who tried to fix the budgeting process instead of assessments. And what they did is they capped this value here, the new growth value, to 90%, which means that new growth doesn't pay for itself. The taxes required to support the new growth now go back on all the rest of us. So they made it worse, which is typically what our legislature did. But several of them lost their jobs. So hopefully the new crowd will fix it. I don't know. We'll find out. So this is an assessment problem. Tax increases are capped at 3% plus new growth. Assessments, they have no cap. And assessments can vary between properties. They can be wildly inconsistent, which is part of the lack of predictability you have in the situation. My solution is this. Cap property tax assessments. Base this value on the previous sales price and then limit the actual increase to 3%, which is what budgets are required, or it could be 1% or the CPI. It's up to the legislature. But the goal here is predictability. We don't want to be hit, like I showed you earlier with that projection, with a 50% property tax increase. So all of a sudden I'm paying 6,000, then I have to come up with another 3,000 this year for my property taxes. That's outrageous. The assessors need to get together. The legislature needs to get off its ass. It needs to stop picking on the taxing districts and it needs to go after the assessments. If your assessment is capped, if we eliminate this wild inconsistency, then we can bring it under control. You can still point the finger of blame at elected officials who take that 3%, who squander money, who just suck up to the staff and treat them like Santa Claus. You know, if, if uh, the, your elected officials were Santa Claus, staff would come up and sit in their lap and everyone would have a pony. You got to have the balls to say no. You got to say, we can't afford it. Because seriously, the way the situation is going here, we can't afford it. But assessments are where you need to look. Look at the budget but you want to fix the problem, go after assessments.